Hi, my name is Elena Alexeva and I'm a point blank lecturer. I'm lecturing music composition, advanced composition and music theory modules. Today we are going to talk about Hans Zimmer's main theme soundtrack, Interstellar. We are going to look at the piano version of it. Let's go! Let's speak about some facts about the film. Interstellar is a 2014 science fiction film written by brothers Christopher and Jonathan Nolan, directed and produced by Christopher Nolan. Set in the dystopian future where humanity is struggling to survive, the film follows a group of astronauts to travel through a wormhole near Saturn in search of a new home for humankind. The music was written by Hans Zimmer, Interstellar premiered in October 2014, so it was released and the release was really, really successful. It's really interesting that the musical soundtrack really connects and relates to the plot of the film. The issue of time is really, really matter to consider in the music, so the music reflects that aspect. In Hans Zimmer's composition, we can hear the note E, it repeats throughout the beginning until the end. So everywhere, all the parts, they are designed around that E. So E can be in the first octave, sometimes it can be above, sometimes it can be... Sometimes we can find that E. So that note E is everywhere, either in that part or... It called a uh, pedal point, or we also can call it ostinato, something that constantly repeats throughout. The repetitive E note represents the symbol of time. Symbolism is the way how composers imitate musically physical objects and motions, feelings and moods, abstract ideas and conceptions, and even music itself, both as a physical event as an emotional experience. So when composers try to imitate something within the music, um, it's called musical symbolism. So to me personally, Hans Zimmer represents the space and time like a ticking clock, that's E. Like something like a pulse, it's ongoing throughout the beginning until the end. Really interestingly, classical composers have been using the same technique of pedal point or ostinato in different pieces. Let's have a look at a few of them. The prelude written by Frédéric Chopin, number 15, opus 28. This prelude is noted for its representing A flat. So this A flat, it doesn't represent time, but it rather represents raindrops. If we look at another example of music and symbolism, we can find it in Chopin's prelude number four in E minor. Hans von Berlwe called the prelude suffocation due to its sense of despair. In fact, Chopin's last dynamic marking in the piece is smorzando, which means dying away. Before Chopin died, he asked that piece to be played at his funeral.
great. Let's have a look at how it all look in logic. If we look at the MIDI parts, then we can see that E not. So it's all there. Start from E. And if we look throughout till the end, that E repeats everywhere. The key signature of this composition is a natural minor. We have different minor scales. We have natural, harmonic, melodic, double harmonic, etc. Yes. So this scale is a natural minor. Yes, so all the white notes and not E, actually, it's a part of A minor chord. A, C, E. That's the fifth note of the chord. A natural minor, 3, 4 is a time signature. It means three crotched are in the bar. It's not 4, 4, not 1, 2, 3, 4, but rather 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. If we look at the structure, the actual structure of it based on different sections, we wouldn't have verses, we wouldn't have choruses, we would rather have section 1, section 2, section 3, and etc. But it's really interesting that those sections, they more or less look like one another because of the common harmony. If we have a look at the chord progressions that's used A minor, A minor, Today I'm using Hans Zimmer plugins from Spitfire Audio, which is um, really good. Let's have a look first at section one, how it sounds like and what it is. It's really interesting that so we've got that E in the middle, the upper melody, A, B, and the same melody happens throughout the octave underneath. So that's your clock with an E, a representation of time, then one melody on the top, another melody, the same unison melodies underneath. Hans Zimmer actually does it quite a lot in his scores. He would have the chord progression and he would design melodies around it, and those melodies they can be representative in different octaves within the different instruments, which we can see in that section. If we have a look at that harmony, A minor, A minor, then sus chord B, E, A, B, A, like he's trying to find where the melody goes. But the main chord progressions from different sections, they build around that A minor, either A minor or F major, G major, A minor, F major, G major, A minor, sometimes C major, that's it. So within the section two, we can see slightly different movement, again, Note E repeat throughout, but the texture in the right hand is changing.
yeah, we can hear the sustain e, 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 even in the octave. And then from bar 16, the harmony actually changes. So if at the first two sections we had. Then in that new section, he introduced F, which actually changed the chord from A minor to In the next section, we're going to have It could have been a G major, but because we've got E note as a representation of time, that we would have a different chord, G, B, D, E. We can name it G plus six. And that's it. As soon as he played those chord progressions, he played a few times and then he move, he's moving on to a different section. Again, everything is in A minor. Same harmony as in introduction, but with slightly different way how he uh, writes the melodies. And again, we've got that section and then straight after this section, he doesn't have any transition or anything like that, he moves on straight to the different section. We would have, again, But in this case, Hans Zimmer, he's not just using it in this position, he rather play that harmony with an arpeggios and with different melodies. It. If we think about what has Hans Zimmer tried to represent within that texture, within those arpeggios, by using harmony in the arpeggio way, we add more dynamics and more fuller texture, faster notes as well. So those faster notes, they, they represent more dynamic music. Because if I just simply play a chord, and it is what it is, Even if it is a nice chord, it's not going to give you very dynamic emotion because the sound itself sustained and in decayed. But when we, um, when we have an arpeggio version of it, and we also can play forte, uh, we can raise the dynamic, we can diminish the dynamic, but just the tempo itself gives us more dynamic feel. In fact, in the Baroque music, if we look at the harpsichords, the harpsichord itself doesn't really have any dynamics. You can't play piano or forte in it. It has a fixed dynamic. So if you look at the Baroque music, it got lots of ornamentation like this. 
So all of those ornaments and ornamentation composers used to express the dynamics because the sound was flat. In Hans Zimmer's case, so yeah, just using different textures and different octaves, um, he represents different dynamics. And um, again, within that last section, he, he used da 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 da. You've got from one octave. He used that section here, then he got an octave up, an octave up, or octave down. But basically, it's the same sections, just in different octaves. Let's have a listen to it again. So in the different section, he decided to just melodically goes up, 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 something slightly different in contrast to the previous sections. So it means slightly different texture. So contrast and composition is very, very important because when everything is the same and repetitive, it might be hard to listen to. So we need to have some contrasting elements to make the music more interesting. So even though this is um, the contrasting section, the symbol E remains the same. And after that section, again, we're coming to the arpeggio textures, more dynamic mood, crescendo, arpeggio textures, and then going towards the end. That's the last section. And even towards the end, we can hear the note E that fades out. Again, we can think about it as the time and clock. We can think of heartbeat. So many associations we can find. And it's really interesting that Hans Zimmer might meant time. He might meant something else. But as, as long as we listen to the soundtrack, everyone can find something for themselves. That's a great bit of it. Thanks for watching that video. I'm Elena Alexeva, Point Blank Lecture. If you're interested more in our courses, go to pointblankmusicschool.com and I see you next time. Bye.